What's up YouTube, it's Cyberfelon and today I have my Cyber Dragon deck profile. Um, with this deck I managed to top my locals quite a few times as well as even win my store championships. So um, it's a very standard build. There are certain cards here and there in the deck that I kind of play at non-standard ratios. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the deck profile and show you guys how it's built. All right, so to start things off, we have the monsters. Um, basically, you have your three cyber dragons. It is the namesake of the deck. You do have to play three of him because he's, it's a cyber dragon deck. If you're not playing three of him, I don't know what the hell you're playing. Um, next up, you have your three cyber dragon cores. This guy is your main normal summon of the deck. Um, he fetches all your cyber spell and trap cards. Basically, you get him, you search your other stuff. It's he's basically your main consistency of the deck after that his graveyard effect also pops up quite often you get to banish him as cost to special summon any cyber dragon monster from your deck so you can even summon himself the original or the next guy which is mainly the one that you're going to want to summon 90 percent of the time your cyber dragon nashter nashter is the newest cyber dragon to be added to the deck and he is one of the best ones to be added um, when he's normal or special summon, you get to special summon any machine type monster that's in your graveyard with 2100 attack or defense. So you can easily use him to revive your infinity, your nova, your regular cyber dragon. This card is just insane. But the downside is you are locked into machines, but then again, this is a machine deck, so that's not really a downside. Um, and then you can only use his effect once per turn. And he's very, he's a very good card. He's level one. He's a machine, another machine duplication target along with Core, as well as your Cyber Dragon Hurts. Uh, Hurts, I only play one of because you really don't want to see him in your hand unless you have a Galaxy Soldier or a machine duplication. And if you have machine duplication, you're more likely going to be using that on Core. But if you have to use it on him and use him as your normal summon, then you've really true horrible but most of the time you're going to use his effect to um, get a cyber dragon from your graveyard or from your deck uh, you want to dump him 90% of the time off of your chimera tech over not over dragon um the one fusion i'll so show you guys in a bit with the extra deck but you're going to dump him off of his effect to be able to get your core back from grave so that way you can set up for your next turn if you don't OTK your opponent, which majority of the time, your opponent's not gonna even have a next turn. Um, your other card, which is an honorary Cyber Dragon, in my opinion, is your three copies of Galaxy Soldier. This guy is great, especially in combination with hers. Basically, you're just getting free Galaxy Soldiers, free level fives on the field to go into your Nova play, or even your um, Link plays. Um, after that, I do play nine hand traps in the deck. This is kind of a budget option for the most part because I do not own a Phantasme. If you do have him, play him. He's a great card to have in this deck. Um, but I do play Effect Veiler. Now the reason I play Effect Veiler over in Permanence is because Effect Veiler is another light target to discard off of um, both Galaxy Soldier and he's a monster that you can easily just discard off of Nostr. Nostra doesn't require a specific attribute, he just needs a monster to be discarded. Galaxy Soldier does need the light, so that's why Veiler is a very good target for that as well. Um, he isn't as good as, obviously, in permanence because you can't use him during your turn and you can't use him out of the main phase, but still, he's a very good card, and he's not once per turn. And also, he doesn't care about chain blocking. The next light target we do play as a hand trap is your Ghost Ogres and Snow Rabbits. Ghost Ogre is pretty good still this format. It's a great card. It can easily hit a lot of cards and stop your opponent's plays in their tracks, um, especially against the Guard Dragons because they have to have two cards pointing, uh, two monsters pointing to the, to the same zone to link monsters in order to be able to do their effects. Um, it stops your multi-roll, it kind of just messes up your opponent's plays really a lot. Um, and then last but definitely not least, your 
last hand trap is your three copies of Ash Blossom. This card is just stupidly powerful. Like what else is there to say? This can literally end your opponent's turn or even just disrupt their place to the point that they have to really make awkward moves. Um, the last three monsters I do play are three copies of Prankatops. This guy is just a great way to remove any floodgates, any problematic back row your opponent already has set up that you know. For instance, like in the uh, Salamangrate matchup, if you know which cop, like they have their rage or their roar or wh whatever, you can just automatically bring him out and just get rid of it before you go into your place. He can easily clear himself off the field so he doesn't disrupt your Cyber Dragon's ability to special summon itself going second. And it's just overall a great card. Now, the one thing I do want to say is if you do have, for instance, Phantasme, I would definitely put him in the side deck instead and then main deck the Phantasme. Um, other options that you could play instead of like, for instance, the Ogres or the Ashes or anything else are definitely Lancia in the main deck. Um, you could also play some Kaijus as well because it does synergize well with the Cyber Dragons, especially the Machine Guy. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head at the moment. But basically explore your budget options. There are plenty of things that you can play instead of these hand traps. You don't have to play them, but they are definitely the best ones to play. Next up for our spells, we have the most important spell, or at least I'd say it's in the top like five. Um, we have our Cyber Emergency. This card basically searches out every monster, er, every Cyber Dragon in your deck. You can't search out Galaxy Soldier, unfortunately. But it searches out everything in your deck, basically. Um, if your opponent does negate the activation, you can discard a card to add this back to your hand and then use it again. But for instance, Ash Blossom does not negate the activation, it just negates the effect, so you wouldn't be able to do that off of Ash Blossom negating it. After that, you do play the one copy of Repair Plant. This is the one thing I did mention earlier in the video about I play a weird ratio. It's because of this card. Sometimes I feel like I should be bumping this up to two, but so far the one copy has proven itself to be very useful. Um, yeah, what can I say about this card? It searches out, again, everything in your deck as long as you have a Cyber Dragon in Graveyard as well as it can search out your Galaxy Soldier. Now the only reason I do play the one copy instead of two is because if you open this card and no way to get a Cyber Dragon in the graveyard, you literally can't play this card. That's why I feel it's correct at one, but then there are times that I feel I need to see it at two instead. But it's up to you guys, test it out. For me, I think one works perfectly well. But if you guys feel you need the second one, then definitely go ahead and try to sneak it in there. I am playing a 41 card deck, so the space is kind of tight for me, and I really don't know what to take out for it. Um, the next card, which honestly is the best card in the deck, is your three copies of Machine Duplication. You do play this card at three. If you're not playing it at three, then you really need to consider, like, just life because this card is too good not to play at three. Even if they Ash Blossom it, they're gonna most likely just Ash Blossom all your other cards first before this. That, and you always wanna play this at the very end, as late as possible. Try to force out the Ash Blossom, if anything, or any hand traps before you use this. Your machine duplication is basically your combo extender, your combo enabler. It literally is what makes you win the game, and the one thing everybody needs to remember about this card is you do not have to summon two monsters off of it. So even if you have only one Cyber Dragon left in your deck, you can summon just the one Cyber Dragon. So opening multiple copies of this is not a bad thing. Um, the next card I do play is one copy of one for one for obvious reasons. It's only at one. Um, but this card is very good at setting up your um, cyber repair plant, as well as bringing out your um, cyber dragon Nashter, because once he gets brought out, he can easily bring back the cyber dragon that's in your graveyard. Then we do play our fusion spells, the one copy of cyber load fusion, because it's searchable, and this card goes extremely well with your three copies of overload fusion. I am doing more of a fusion oriented build than a XC's focused one or even a link focused one. Um, I do feel the fusion one is better because you have more opportunity, you have more options to do. Like, 
extremely good OTKs and just crazy plays with it. Um, these two cards in combination are really good because your overload fusion basically sets up your cyberload fusion and then your cyberload fusion being a quick play spell you can just easily go for that extra damage during your um, battle phase. Um, overload fusion is just a great card getting out your chimera attacks and your chimera attacks are just basically your OTK. They're pretty much your win condition. Um, then you have your one copy of your cyber rev system. This is basically your monster reborn. This is your extender for the deck. You can easily just go ahead and bring back any cyber dragon in the graveyard because all your monsters are basically cyber dragon in the graveyard. As well as you can just special summon one from your hand just to continue your combos and extend your plays. Then I do play the one copy of Monster Reborn. It's kind of a little redundant to have this and your Cyber Rev system, but being able to Monster Reborn some of your opponent's cards can be very powerful. Um, definitely being able to Monster Reborn your opponents like Dingirisu in the Orcus matchup is just crazy because you're getting that extra pop and he's also a machine so you can easily just go into contact fusion with him. Um, Monster Reborn is just a powerful card. It's just so great. Being able to also revive your infinity later in the game is just too good. And then the last two cards in the deck are two copies of Pot of Desires. Now, Pot of Desires may conflict sometimes with the deck because you don't want to be banishing your cyber dra your original cyber dragons, but you basically end up using Pot of Desires at the very end of your combos just to be able to dig deeper into the deck and continue your plays. If you have nothing else, it's basically your last resort card. Um, it's still a very powerful card. There are those unfortunate times that you do banish like all of your original cyber dragons or your all your machine duplications or just all your your play your um, play enablers, your extenders, all of that and you just basically you just have to live with it sadly. But it's a really good card. Definitely play it and it can easily be cited out in games two or three if you need to. Now off to the extra deck. We do play our two Chimera Tech Mech Fleet Dragons. Um, this guy is basically here to be able to contact fuse away your opponent's Link Monsters that are in the Link Monsters or just anything that's in the extra monster zone and just basically say haha, bye. Um, you do play your one Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon for the Sky Striker matchups, for the Mirror matchups, for the Orcus matchups. Basically because you can just contact fuse with all their machines, which is pretty freaking hilarious once they see that you're playing Cyber Dragons. Then you have your two copies of a Rampage Dragon. This is the card that I was mentioning about earlier in the um, video with Overload Fusion. This is your main target. This guy is able to just pop any spell and trap cards equal to the number of Cyber Dragon monsters used for his fusion summon. As well as he's able to dump two um, Light Machine type monsters from your deck mainly your hers and your core so that way you can um, have a play for next turn with your core back in your hand and he's able to gain additional attacks so basically he's a 2100 triple attacker and if you have seeger on the field he'll be a 4100 triple attacker which basically will end the game um, you do play your one copy of cyber twin dragon he's there for your overload fusion target as well being able to attack for 2800 twice is also still pretty dang good as well as he's also here for your nova target in case your opponent is foolish enough to destroy nova um, then you have two of your super poly targets you have your starving venom fusion dragon as well as your um salamangrate violet chimera your super poly is going to be in your side in your side deck so this is something that doesn't come up unless you're actually playing those specific matchups Starving Venoms for the Thunder Dragon matchup, Salamangrate, Violet Chimera is for the obvious Salamangrate matchup. Um, then I do play two copies of Cyber Dragon Nova because he is your alternate um, win condition. You mainly want to go for him or your Me uh, not Mega Fleet um, Rampage Dragon. Those two are your OTK enablers. They're the ones that basically push for game. Nova is such a great card being able to boost himself up by 2100 and then having him with Seeger being able to basically boost him up to 6300 in total. It's very easy to OTK with this deck. This It OTKs like it's just its job. Um, he's also here for your infinity plays. 
having two infinity in the deck, you may not come up with two infinity too often, but more than you would expect, you are going to be going into at least one of them, if not both. I have had a few games where I've gone into both infinities, and honestly, it has saved me so many times. So double infinity is something that you want to play in the deck even though you don't go into the second one as often as you would think, but it is necessary. Then for the last three cards, we do play the one Link Karibo because you do have a few level ones. In the um, case of opening hers you, and say Machine Dupe, you wanna definitely normal summon your hers, Machine Dupe, and then go into Link Karibo, and then you'll be able to get another Cyber Dragon from your graveyard. And then we do play the one Platinum Gadget. Platinum Gadget is a great extender, being able to use his effect to special summon your Nasher from your hand so you don't have to discard, and then being able to revive a uh, Cyber Dragon from your graveyard is very powerful and allows you to just go ahead and continue your combos and continue your plays. The only downside to this little guy is that he cannot be used as Link Material the turn he is summoned, so you're gonna have to go and basically Link Summon your Seeger, for instance, after, if you're gonna use him as material. But most of the time, you're just gonna bring out your Seeger in a different zone. Seeger's such a powerful card for this deck. You only play him at one, but he's so great just because he's able to, um, not bounce. He's able to go and boost all your other Cyber Dragon monsters, or just any of your monsters with 2100 or more attack by 2100 points. The downside is he can't actually inflict damage to your opponent, but he can still attack. So you can always crash him into something of equal attack or even something lower. And the fun, the best thing to do and most unexpected for the most part on your opponent is to boost himself when your opponent tries to run him over. So basically he'll become a 4200 attacker and they will not expect it at all. Um, I've had many people do that they were like, wait, what? He can target himself, and it's just absolutely hilarious. But that's it for today, YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. This is a very fun and very powerful deck. It may not be the top tier meta deck of the format at the moment, but it can definitely compete with the best of them. It has great matchups against all of them because just of its natural ability to get rid of your opponent's monsters in the extra monster zone. So Salamangrates, Orcus, you name it. The only matchup that's really hard for this deck to deal with is the Thunder Dragon matchup because the majority of their extra deck monsters are in the main monster zone. And it's kind of hard to deal with a um, Thunder Dragon Colossus, especially since it prevents you from adding cards from your deck to your hand. But that's it for today. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the deck profile. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, Feel free to leave that down in the comments below, and as always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys later.